Good evening from the Robert and Gertrude Chuck Music Recital Hall, located on the River Campus of Southeast Missouri State University. I'm Ken Dobbins, President of Southeast, and on behalf of our Board of Regents, our faculty, staff, and students, I welcome you to the first of four debates of those candidates vying to represent Missouri's 8th Congressional District. Our moderator tonight is Dr. Tom Hardy, Professor Emeritus of Speech, Communication, and Theater. Dr. Hardy is a retired faculty member where he was an outstanding professor, a nationally recognized debate coach, and chair of the Department of Speech Communication. He's also now a columnist, a food columnist, for the Southeast Missouri newspaper and hosts many programs on our national public radio station, KRCU. We hope that you enjoy the debate tonight, and we hope that you will listen to the other three debates. So at this time, it is my privilege to turn the program over to Dr. Tom Hardy. Tom? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Dobbins. Nearly 150 years ago, one of your predecessors as president of this university coined the phrase, I'm from Missouri, you have to show me. So tonight we're applying that show me philosophy to civics and politics by asking the four people who would like to be our representative in Congress to show us why we should vote for them. Let me introduce them to you now. First, Joanne Emerson, the Republican candidate. Second, Tommy Sowers, the Democratic candidate. Third, Rick Van Dieven, the Libertarian candidate. And fourth, Larry Bill, the Independent candidate. Candidates, we thank you for being here tonight. Now let me spell out the rules for tonight's encounter. Each candidate will begin with a three-minute opening statement. The order of those statements was determined by a random drawing which took place just a few moments ago before these proceedings began. Each candidate will also be given two minutes for a closing statement, and the order of the closing statements will be the reverse of the order of the opening statements. In between, the candidates will submit to questions from our panel, so let me introduce to you at this time our distinguished panel. They are John Rust, the publisher of the Southeast Missourian and the co-president of Rust Communications, and Mike Smythe, the vice president and general manager of KFES 12 and the Heartlands CW. Now, following each opening statement, the panelists will question each candidate in turn. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond to a question directed to him or her, and then after that response, the other candidates will each have one minute to comment. Now, roughly midway uh, through the debate, we will reverse the order of questioning just to help ensure that uh, each of the candidates has some opportunity to get in the first word as well as the last word. So, I think we're now ready to begin the debate. Before we start, just a reminder to the audience to please refrain from applauding or otherwise uh, responding to the remarks of the candidates as it will just take time away from uh, the candidates' uh, time to speak. So, if everyone is now ready and understands the rules, I think we're ready to begin with the opening statements. And by the luck of the draw, the first person to begin will be Ms. Emerson. You have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much to Southeast Missouri State University for hosting our debate tonight, Dr. Dobbins. Uh, to you, Dr. Hardy, and to Mike Smythe and John Rust, I really appreciate your being here. You know, Southeast is a tremendous, tremendous institution that really serves as the cornerstone of education for our region. And I'm so very, very proud of the incredible investment you all have made here in research and education in the arts and in our community, and I'm pretty proud of the football team, I might add, 4-0, number 18, can't beat that. Elections are about the future. Um, but in this case, I think we should talk just a little bit about some of the positive things that we've worked on here together in, in the 8th Congressional District. Uh, we have built Highway 60 to connect people and commerce from the east to the west. We have completed the Bill Emerson Memorial Bridge that connects our congressional district to the rest of the country. We have worked really hard together on riverways infrastructure and crucial flood control so that we can connect our agricultural and our manufacturing economies to the rest of the world. Uh, so in, in order to preserve 
this type of quality of life, this investment that we've made in the safety and the security of our congressional district, this investment in the jobs and in the future, it's really important, I think, for us to have a plan, a good plan. We can't afford policies like cap and trade that burden our families and our employers with higher energy taxes. We can't afford environmental regulations that stop our Midwest economy right in its tracks. We can't afford health care laws that put bureaucrats between us and our choices for care. And we can't afford a federal government that runs $1.3 trillion deficits without blinking an eye. Each and every one of these policies will negatively impact our families and cause a lot of hurt to small businesses. I've seen it up close and personal, and it cuts deep. So with a conservative leading Congress, one that can put a check on the Obama administration and runaway spending, runaway regulation, I think that we have an opportunity to make a positive difference for our congressional district and the families who live here. I'm honored to have served as your member of Congress for the last several years, and I'd like to have another opportunity to serve because I think these next two years are going to be the most important in history. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Emerson. The next opening statement will be given by Mr. Sowers. Good evening. I'd like to also thank the university and fellow panelists for joining me here tonight. And Congresswoman Emerson, before we begin, I'd like to thank you for your 14 years of service thank in you. D.C. My name's Tommy Sowers, and I'm a veteran running for Congress. And I'm running to bring new blood to D.C. Now, I've said that to tens of thousands of voters, and I just said it yesterday as I was door knocking here on William Street. And I met a woman named Mary who said, I hear that. It is time for new blood. And the reason is, is that our, my kids don't live here anymore. Voters like Mary know that this election is not about the past, it's not about polls, it's not about party. It is about the future of our home. They know that our jobs have been shipped overseas to Mexico and China. And they're upset to learn that Congresswoman Emerson has voted for these trade deals. They know that members of Congress have spent way too much money. And they're upset to find out that Congresswoman Emerson has supported the Wall Street bailout. Tonight, we have a very clear choice. We can send one of us to fight all of them. By voting for me, you're voting for a native, someone that was born and raised here. The values of faith, family, hard worth, pro-life, pro-gun, pro-term limit, these are values that were instilled in me. With me, you're voting for a veteran. We've got our lowest number of veterans in Congress since World War II. And I'd be the only Green Beret in Congress. And I'd use that stature to end these wars, bring our troops home, and invest here in rural America. Now tonight, you're going to hear a lot from Congresswoman Emerson about blaming other DC politicians. But here is the fact. All the DC incumbents are to blame. Congresswoman Emerson has been in D.C. for 14 years. They cannot blame away the reckless spending. They cannot blame away the jobs that have left. And I learned in the military that when you're in charge, you're responsible for everything that you do and everything that you fail to do. Tonight, we have a very clear choice. We can keep sending the same folks back to D.C. and we'll get the same result or we can vote for new blood, a veteran, a fighter, and a leader that will fight for our home. And I'd be honored if you join me in this fight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sowers. The next opening statement will be presented by Mr. Van Dieven. Good evening. I am honored to be here tonight. My name is Rick Van Dieven. I am a husband, father, laborer, and musician. I am also proud to be the Libertarian Party candidate for U.S. Congress from the 8th Missouri Congressional District. I would like to thank Southeast Missouri State University for hosting this event and inviting me to participate. I also want to thank tonight's panelists, moderators, and the audience for attending. Two years ago, about this time, I found myself watching the TARP debates on C-SPAN. I was amazed, but not surprised, at the efficiency, 
in which the bailout of the financial industry moved through Congress. TARP reinforced what most of us already knew. The left and right wings of the big government party will always ignore our liberty in order to appease their moneyed interest. The time had arrived for me to stand up, engage myself in the political process, and put ideas into action. The words liberty and freedom get thrown around a lot with recurring frequency these days. What is liberty? What does a free society look like? Freedom is the positive consequence of liberty. Liberty is the self-acknowledgement that you own your life, that your life is subordinate to none, and that no life is subordinate to you. This country's $13.5 trillion debt is the negative result of the politicians' disregard for liberty. Perpetual war, unsound currency, social welfare programs, and a mercantilist economic system in which profit is privatized and losses are socialized would not exist in a free society. The public debt will eventually have to be paid. The rulers have not shown any interest in reducing spending. Instead, they participate in a dangerous game of kick the can through borrowing, inflation, and taxation. I propose reducing the $13.5 trillion public debt by ending the invasions and occupations of Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, closing the 700 U.S. military bases located in 130 foreign countries, returning our troops home, and giving every citizen of this country a direct refund of our unnecessary, aggressive, and interventionist foreign policy. Prosperity through peace, optimism through liberty. These are the standards that can help us achieve freedom. All we have to do is embrace the idea that we are truly liberated. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, thank you, Mr. Van Dieven. And the final opening statement will be presented by Mr. Bill. Hello. Uh, my name is Larry Bill, and I'm running for Congress as an independent. I'd like to thank the university for allowing us to have this forum. I think this will be an excellent event, which will allow us to interchange on ideas. We may actually come up with some new solutions. Uh, much like Mr. Van Dieven, about, about around a year and a half ago, I saw what was going on in Congress. I was very disappointed with the actions of both parties, and I thought, well, maybe I could help out. I uh, grew up on a farm, actually worked myself through college, graduated from SEMO, uh, served uh, 13 years active duty in the Air Force as a pilot, and then I also served nine years in the uh, reserves where I retired as a lieutenant colonel. The other side of the coin is I've also worked in business. Uh, my wife and I have operated a business here in Cape County for about 17 years. And what we do is we buy houses, uh, remodel them and resell them, and then uh, that's, that's the way we make our living. I'm uh, the chief uh, carpenter, electrician, and plumber, and then my wife is the uh, painter and the house cleaner. And I thought, well, maybe this practical experience would, would help us uh, once we got into Congress, because I could see decisions being made by people who did not have this kind of experience, and they were actually poor decisions, especially the bank bailout. Now, in order to do that, I decided to become an independent candidate. And in order to be an independent candidate, I had to get 5,600 signatures of registered voters, and our final count was 6,700. And we had to do that by going door to door and working fairs and those type, types of things. As far as campaign financing is concerned, the conventional candidates go out and they go to lobbyists and big donors and try to get as much money as they can to buy advertising. We've taken a different tact. I've decided not to accept any financial contributions from anyone except myself and my wife. And I feel that's critical because I do not want to go to Washington owing anybody anything. So that if you're out there in the, in the neighborhood or whatever and you see a sign, a billboard, a newspaper ad, anything like that, be fully aware that I paid for it myself. And I think that's critical to have that independence, especially with the way the lobbyists control our Congress right now. Some of the topics we talked about when we were going to door-to-door uh, -to, -door to get these signatures were term limits for congressmen, reducing spending, energy independence for the United States, enforcing the border with Mexico, and fully protecting our First and Second Amendment rights. 